Our old pal Ryan Chambers joins the show to discuss future lineup predictions for the Dallas Stars. We'll take a look around the NHL and plenty more next on Locked on Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy Stars fans, welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer 105 through the fan. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast in on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your First listen, we welcome back to the show once again, Mr. Ryan Chambers from Starcastic Remarks. It's been a few weeks since I've had the pleasure to discuss some Dallas Stars hockey with Ryan. Ryan, how have you been? Are you really into the Summer Olympics? Do you find yourself kind of attached to that whole thing or is it kind of whatever for you? <laughs> uh, to, it's, it's not the Olympics fault, man. It, it's just it, I, for those of you that know my personal background right now, I am just I, we just moved back to the DFW area, me and my family. And like, I have had zero time to do anything. Yes. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> I, I, I did see, I did see that the, the women's rugby sevens team did a really good job. They got their first bronze medal, I yeah. think in their history. That was pretty cool to watch. I, I watched a short on, uh, I, I think it was on YouTube, but you, you know, so far so good from what I've heard. So normally I kind of get into like the water polo for some reason. Yeah. I have no idea yeah. why. Yeah, but absolutely. I enjoy it. Good, good. Uh, for some of us that you know don't have things to do, I am. I've been locked in. So, <laughs> <laughs> man, uh, swimming, dude. Oh my good. I am sitting there. I am yelling at the TV. I'm charging on our Americans to get to the finish line. I I really enjoy it. I I, I think I kind of enjoy both Olympics pretty evenly in, in terms of summer, mm -hmm. winter, obviously the winter with the hockey. I'm super pumped to watch best on best here oh, instead of the yeah. all-star game in the next, uh, in the next year. So th that'll be uh super, super I I exciting, but uh, yeah, Olympics are certainly um, a good, good time. All righty. Let's jump into uh, some Dallas stars hockey. Shall we? Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as playoffs wind down the sports stop sporting like we want them to, but this summer FanDuel is looking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. So I believe we caught up right before July 1st in free agency. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on what the Stars did, adding Matt Dumba, adding Labushkin. And how do you feel about the Dallas Stars from the last time they stepped off the ice in the Western Conference Final? Do you think they stepped back? Do you think they're pretty even? How do you how do you see the the stars currently? Honestly, when I first it, like the emotional response is always the first thing, right? Yes. And you're you're obviously hacked off, obviously, particularly because of Matt Dumba, right? And that that's yes. fine to be. You're <laughs> absolutely allowed to have that that hacked offness that you feel and be you know be upset about that. But the the further we get away, and we're almost a month away from the free agency period starting now. It, it, I feel a lot better about it. I, yeah. I, I, I truly, honestly do. And and I kind of talked myself into it on the last couple episodes we did. Uh, me and my brothers on sarcastic remarks. We uh, at first it was like you know it really sucks. We're obviously worse than we were when we ended the playoffs. Yeah. But you're not going to give a six year deal to a 34 year old. We talked. We've talked about that on end yes. and about Chris Tanev. <laughs> But the the thing that Jim Nell did is that as soon as he made that decision to flip from the Tanev and be like, okay, we we got to go in the next direction, he did. And and to to his to his credit, there was nothing really out there other than Matt Roy that could compare to Chris Tanev. So what did he do? He went for quantity instead of quality, and he gave Pete DeBoer as many options as possible. So I, I think that's what I'm more excited about. I'm, I actually got more excited about it as I, especially as I was looking at the D pairings, I was just like that there's, it, he didn't just go out and get some random guys. I, I know it looks like it on, yeah. especially at the beginning, but the more you delve deep into some of these guys and like who they've played with, especially Labushkin, I'll, I'll discuss that in a second. Yeah. And you probably know where I'm going with that a little yeah. bit, but it, it, it opens up all of these possibilities and it just gives Pete DeBoer some options. I mean, yes. the, the, I, so to, 
long answer short, I think they're about the same as to where they were to start last season. Yeah, pre I don't, I don't, pre TANF. I don't mm-hmm. think they're better than than post TANF, but that ship sailed, and they and you know Jim Nill did his thing, and he proved it again why he's one of the best GMs in the NHL. I, I would concur with pretty much everything you just said and, and laid out as the days pass. And as we get closer, I, I feel a lot better about where the stars are. And you mentioned Labushkin and I did an episode on Labushkin yesterday here on locked on stars and discussed what his numbers looked like with Morgan Riley, which were some of his best numbers of his career and some of his advanced analytics and how that could possibly be a perfect pairing for Miro Haskinen. And yeah, I'm not necessarily in love with the players that the stars went out and got in, in terms of, of Dumba and Labushkin. But as you mentioned, they've been around the block. They're not just throwaway pieces. I do have concerns about where they fit into the lineup because Dallas is expecting them to be in a top four role. Uh, at least from uh, my, my perspective, if you're trying to, have it leveled between lefties and righties. It would be nice to finally get Miro on his strong side. And if Labushkin can hold his weight with Miro, then you have to feel pretty good about Dumba and Harley because Dumba is sort of that stay-at-home defenseman right now. And I discussed this with uh, Seth of Locked on Wild last week, and I would love to to share this with you because I I think this gives... um, uh, give some insight on maybe what Matt Dumba has gone through the past few years, and maybe he'll find his game here in Dallas. So he obviously came up as a guy that was super offensively inclined. That was sort of his game on the power play. He was real mobile, but he tore his pec muscle at one point, and that kind of forced him to change and adapt his game. Something like you saw with Tyler Sagan and some of the injuries he dealt with. He didn't have his shot. So Dumba has sort of had to usher in this new era of his own game. And maybe he's still sort of finding that. And look, Arizona wasn't very good and he didn't play much of a role for Tampa. So maybe here in Dallas with a better defensive core around him and a team that really preaches good defense, one of the better teams (laughs) um, in terms of goals against and expected goals against, maybe he finds himself. And that's where I start to get a little bullish on the stars chances where they really, really find themselves. And maybe this D unit, maybe I'm not giving them uh, enough credit. I'm not, uh, I'm underestimating them. So I, I'm hoping uh, we see a lot more positives out of this, including some of the the physical play. I, I think that was something that if Jim Neal couldn't get the, the Roy, he's like, okay, let's get some guys that can maybe bruise some bodies a bit as well. Right, and we kind of knew we were going to lose uh, Hawk and Paw, which, by the way, I don't know where that situation is. I, I-, I hope he gets to play again. I, I know. I really do. Yeah, it sounds with the injury, right? It seems devastating, which is very, very unfortunate. But, yeah. But, uh, anyways, with, with the loss of him, and uh, just the f- one of the things that I talked about in that series against the Oilers is that we just didn't have enough snarl. It wasn't necessarily grit. We had we have grit. We have guys who are showing grit now. We we've, we've seen Robertson with the reversal hit that he did on Stone in the Vegas series. Yeah, we're not used to seeing him do that. He's just he's starting to show that. What they went out and did, uh, the Stars organization and with Jim Nill at the top, is they went out and they got guys who are right handed that that they could do lefty righty on on all three pairings if they needed to. They went out and got some guys who can play on the penalty kill more so than on the power play because. I mean, you've got Harley, you've got Haskin, and that's yeah. all you really need. You <laughs> yes. don't really need somebody else to do that. And then, the, and these guys are big, like like these guys are six three plus, like both yeah. Labushkin and Dumba. And and you know, unfortunately for Stars fans, we saw how how big of a issue he was for the Stars in that series <laughs> yeah. against the Wild a couple of years ago. So it, it, I'm hoping what this proves, especially with Dumba, is that he's one of those guys that you hate. Until he's on your team, yeah. So, yeah. like a Jamie Ben, like a Brad Marchand, a Tom Wilson, a uh, Mika Zabinajad to a, a certain extent, like uh, you know th- those guys that are just really nasty yeah. to play against. They're little rats. And, yeah, <laughs> we can be exactly. honest. No, no, yeah. you're, you're right. That's exactly yeah. it. And and then yeah. and then like like I mm. meant like you were mentioning, we've st- the the thing that's that's going to be really weird about. Uh, and most of it's going to be about the the defense. Like that's going to be the talk of yeah. for stars hockey for the next 
you know, three months, I, maybe even going into the first couple months of the season, maybe even after we've played in Finland. I mean, I, I honestly don't know like what those deep pairings are going to look like. And it's exciting mm-hmm. because, and, uh, and maybe we can just jump straight into this, but like you could have a, a, a option where all three of your top three defensemen, I would argue are on the left side Yes, and you could see, and, and just because, you know, Essa Lindell is a third pairing defenseman doesn't necessarily mean he's going to get third pairing defenseman minutes. Correct. It's just that you, you just, you just take the guys that depending on the situation and you throw them out there as needed. So if, if Dumba is more better suited for the defensive play, then you throw him and Lindell out there in a, in a defensive face-off role, or if they, you know, if they're first icing, um, if you're in the offensive zone, you could throw Harley and Miro together, even if they don't play together regularly, according to the lineup or whatever. So it, it that's, what's really exciting about this is that there are so many different options that they can do. And they still have the option of, you know, keeping Miro and Harley together, which I know stars fans don't want to see that. And probably the coaching staff wants to venture from that and just at least experiment with it and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. But that option is still there. You have enough guys in the lineup where you can still have two lefties at the top and do lefty righty, lefty righty with your two bottom pairings still. And it still works out. So if, if Nils Lundqvist is not able to go, then you've got, two guys in Labushkin and Dumba who can play in those, those two roles. And then you've got uh, Brendan Smith who came over in, in a deal, one way deal. He's going to be there as well. And, and then there's, there's still other guys within the organization that can, uh, they can take care of that role. So it, it's, it, it's just, it, it's very intriguing and it's very mm. exciting to think about because there, it, it, there's no definitive lineup, especially with the defense. I, I don't think it's ever going to be the same for the first month of the season and then that allows jim jim nil and you know pete DeBoer, steve spot elaine nazardine to kind of go through these and be like okay well these guys are working well yeah. together let's keep them together for this particular situation or heck if if for some reason they work together good all the time then just keep the pairings the way they are and we'll just fly from there and if you know a team figures us out then we'll switch it up on them, and it, it just gives them a lot of options, and I love to see that. Yeah, I love to see that. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much, I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games, and the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. We're in the dog days of summer currently. The Texas Rangers are trying to dig deep here at the trade deadline. They've made a couple of moves. They've added a pitcher to the bullpen. Josh Young is finally back. Maybe they can turn it around here in the second half and make a magical run. You could probably get some pretty decent odds on the Rangers for winning back-to-back World Series championships. That could be very hard, but go to FanDuel this summer because they're hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com. Start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Yeah, I think you make an excellent point in terms uh, of the usage because Labushkin is someone that's averaged 17 minutes per game here over the last three seasons. And of course, Miro is going to be somewhere 24 to 25. The nice thing is you're probably not going to have a situation where Ryan Suter was playing almost 22 minutes uh, a game. You can start to spread the wealth a bit more. And and Dumba, I think, is a player that could take charge and take on a few more minutes. He he played just over, I believe, 19 in, uh, in Tampa Bay. So as you mentioned, situationally, Maybe you see Miro and Harley a lot together at towards the end of games, especially if they need offense or even to shut it down defensively. And that was something we sort of saw in the last few months of the season with even Tanev and pairings that were Absolutely. pretty solidified. But I mean, everybody was playing with everybody. It was Harley and Lindell at some points, Tanev and Miro. And then you could go back to uh, whether that's Suter and Tanev. We saw that quite a bit too. Whatever it was, they just kind of rolled along. Some of that was due to just, they were rolling five D men. So they didn't really have perfect pairings, but you would have to think now Dallas 
has, you would think, hopefully six D-men they sort of trust. Niels Lundqvist is, of course, still uh, the oddball out there. We'll see what happens here in year three uh, with Pete DeBoer. But what I say and what I would really, really love to happen is Liam Bixel comes up in November, December, whenever it is, solidifies himself as a player in the National Hockey League. You put Bixel possibly into that top four, and you could possibly reunite Harley and Haskinen. And maybe you have Bixel with Dumba as your left righty pairing. Now that is a now that looks like a top four that could possibly do some damage and and you're rolling with. Um, or you could have Bixel on that third pairing uh, with Lindell possibly. Um, I, I, where, where, wherever you kind of go. And as you mentioned, this is where we could, I mean, we could talk for an hour about the different combinations exactly. <laughs> and stuff right, as, yeah. as well. So um, I, I will, I will segue into this uh, a bit. Cause I, I did want to, to show this uh, to you and, and get your thoughts on my lineup predictions. Uh, I put this out a couple of weeks ago on an episode and I, I sort of just, you know, put everybody into a certain position um, and we've talked about the defense here, so we'll, we'll go into the, the lines here. And, uh, there's a lot of talk about Johnston on that top line with Rope and Robertson, but, but right now, I don't know why I'm feeling Logan Stankoven on that right wing with Rope and Jason. You keep Johnston as a center with Jamie Ben. I'm afraid to almost break Ben and Johnston up, uh, how do you feel about this? Would you go anywhere different? To be honest, I, I you probably feel almost like uh, it, it, it won't matter too much. <laughs> they're, they're just so talented. They're going to figure it out. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to what you believe the lines could look like on opening night. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of still on the feeling that Johnston is going to be on the top line. Yeah. And, 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 and I mean, you know, w- there's so many different ways you could do <laughs> yeah. with, with these top guys. It's, it's kind of nice. The 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 reason why I think I want to see Wyatt Johnston go up on the top line is not necessarily because I think he would be better than Stan Coven, which I think he could. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's it's the 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 wild card in there is obviously Maverick Bork. Mm-hmm. And if you if you have Jamie Ben, you've got Maverick Bork, and you've got Stan Coven. We 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 saw that. Well. Not a lot of us did, but we we definitely at least heard about the magic that was between Bork and Stankoven at the AHL mm-hmm. level. So I, I don't know if that can translate to the NHL. That's yet to be seen. But if if that can translate to the NHL the way that it did to the AHL so perfectly, and Jamie Ben is a absolute perfect guy to have as a a, a member of that trio. Yeah, because his it's a great he's, point. he's very much like. Uh, Joe Pavelski and the fact that he's starting to get up there in age a little bit, but he's still been productive. He's still a 20 goal scorer. You know, he can get you 50, 60 points. Yeah. And, and he's, he, he's just, he's shown with his uh, hockey IQ that he can play with younger guys and he's just in the right spot at the right time. And then we, we've just also seen the, how he, especially Jamie Ben has kind of mentored some of these other guys. He brought in, Wyatt Johnston uh, two years ago and that chemistry just for some reason clicked and he and Johnston were just ridiculous. And I don't think Johnston needs him anymore. And, and I, I think yeah. that, you know, Bork can stank and kind of need him a little bit. And then what that also allows you to do is the flexibility on that second line. If you have Stan Coven, Bork and Ben, if Stan Coven and Bork are kind of struggling in the face off dot a little bit, Jamie Ben is more than perfect more than capable of taking. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh like, yeah. He, he's one of the best face off men in the NHL. And even though he started off as a left winger, he was transferred to center when the stars went through their dark ages and got really good. So th- that again, it's just the, the flexibility that Jim Nill puts together with this lineup. That's why I would like to kind of see that second line, uh, formulate that way with Logan Maverick and Jamie though. I think that would just gel really good together. Mm. And, if it doesn't start at the very beginning of the season, and I, I definitely think we'll see it at some point. Yeah, no, that, that, that's a good point. I, I can't wait to to watch Maverick Bork, and I'm on the on the record of saying that I've I put some hypotheticals out there uh, 
as such as if if you had to get rid of Johnston, Stankoder, Bork, if you had to get rid of one of them, who would you choose? And, you know, I've said Bork a few times, but a lot of that is probably recency bias. I mean, look, we've seen Johnston, we've seen Stankoven at the NHL level. So I'm ready for Bork to just shove everything I've said right back into my mouth <laughs> here this next season. I can't I can't wait to, to watch him get a full season. And man, if, if he gets off to um, a hot start and you would almost assume he does, or at least proves that he can play at this level with what we saw from Stan Coven and in some of his offensive production decline. But what Stan Coven does is just a player in, in terms of his forechecking ability uh, really stands out. Even if he wasn't scoring or picking up points, he was still effective. And Bort just seems like he's almost a mirror image. He's going to be effective whether or not he finds the back um, of the net or, or not. And a, a line I would truly like to see at some point is Johnston, Stankoven and Bork throw all the young guns together, <laughs> sign them all to eight by eights and uh, we'll watch them for the next decade. <laughs> and just throw Jamie Ben on that top line. Yeah, he'll be fine. They just should put the young guys together. <laughs> yeah. He'll figure, hey, if, if, if he can, Hey, I believe he could do what uh, Joe Pavelski did with, he could. <laughs> with, with <It's>, Robertson. <laughs> yeah, and, and again, yeah. it's, it's just the, you can see it. you like, you can mm. see the flexibility throughout the lineup that Jim Nell is able to do. And it, it's just fantastic. Now, the 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 one thing I do want to point out about Maverick Bork compared to both Johnston and uh, Logan Stankoven is just a little bit of a different element. He's kind of being gifted a roster spot just because of the just mostly because of the cap. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, Jim Nill had to make some decisions and I mean, everyone knows he's ready. Like I like he, yes. he, he I, there's no reason for him to go back to the AHL. He was AHL MVP that he, he's proven everything other than winning the Calder Cup there. That's literally the only thing that he, he didn't prove it. But even with Johnston, even with Stan Coven, it, it's like Jim Nill put pylons in their ways to to as like a prove me. Yeah. Kind of, like prove it to yeah. me that you are ready. He did that with with uh you no know, with Jake as well with Jake Ottinger. He just put these little pylons and put veteran players in their way and said, okay, if you're better than them, go go take it. Now Maverick Bork, that's different. I mean, he like like you said, he's basically being gifted a top six role yeah. on this team, and the expectation is going to be a little higher for him than it was for Stan Coven or even for Wyatt Johnston when he came in. Yeah, Just I mean Johnson we, was a tryout almost. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> At the end like of the we, day. like yeah. like uh, we didn't know what he was going to be able to do and score no. twenty goals in his in his rookie season. That was yeah. that was not possible. We didn't see that coming. So it now that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Could the pressure get to him and it cause him to kind of stumble in his first year? Yeah, that's po yeah. a possibility. But at the same time, that could also give him a confidence boost and say, hey. You know, Jim Nell made millions of dollars of decisions based off the fact that he he believes I can play in the NHL. Yeah. So I'm going to go out there and, you know, prove it to him that, you know, his faith was not misguided. So th that's going to be another interesting aspect and in all that. And just, just to see, like, because that's something that Jim Nell just he had to ignore his own philosophy in in regard to the cap, if that makes any yeah. sense. Yeah. So he, he just had to go go with it that way. It'll be um it, it'll be a ton of fun to to see what they they trot out there on on opening night. They just have so much talent. They really do. So so much young talent, and, and hopefully they can keep them together here for uh, the the foreseeable future. I want to segue on the other side a, a bit in, into some more Jamie Ben talk. I'm curious to to hear your thoughts on his possible future here in Dallas with his contract coming up. Um, and uh, we'll jump into some more stars talk here in just a moment. Jimmy Ben has sort of been, uh, I feel like he's been a, a very hot topic here over the summer because he'll be 35 here at the end of next season. Uh, his contract is finally coming to an end. A lot of fans, uh, I think, are divided in terms of they would love to keep him around. He's a wonderful captain. He's made a huge impact here in Dallas, and he's actually starting to play some of his best hockey here recently in, in, in his career, at least in his early thirties. And I think others are, man, Hey, that that's going to be nice to get him off the books and we can go pay some guys and then we can get even stronger. Curious where you line up. 
where where do you feel Jamie Ben is at the end of next season? Do you do you feel like he re-signs here in Dallas? I feel like it's 75-25% he stays because Dallas just loves their their loyal guys. And I feel like he's pretty loyal and he wants to try to get it done here. Can we please not turn into Vegas? Like, like, <laughs> like, like let's not, let's not do it. We shouldn't even be speculating about this. And it was just <laughs> freaking Vegas golden eyes had to go off and just be completely unloyal to like one of the greatest players ever and Mark Andre Fleury and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Anyways, he ain't going anywhere. The, okay. There there's, I, like the, I, I, I posed that question with my brothers a little bit because I was like, you know, there is something to it. There is, especially, I mean, Stamkos, perfect example right now. Yeah, I mean, and, and, you could throw him there too. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, examples. Um, like two captains who meant everything to their fan bases and just because their teams made hard decisions or in the San Jose Sharks case, a stupid decision, that they, they, you know, they lose their, their beloved player. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's going to happen with Jamie Benn. Uh, I, he's, he's obviously not going to get the same contract he is right now, but (laughs) I, I, I think he understands that. And I mean, every read the room, everybody understands that. And he, he understands that he has a really good chance to win a Stanley cup here. And Mm -hmm. that's very rare for people, his age to be able to be counted on and be a captain for an organization and, you know, have the opportunity that he has. So, now, now, I'm not saying he's going to come out here and take a three-year deal for $1 million per year. That's He's he's not at that point. He, he's absolutely not. He is not as productive as Joe Pavelski was in his final couple of seasons. But, I mean, read the intangibles, guys. I, I mean, yeah. th- this team without Jamie Benn in the playoffs would not have existed. I mean, we, you and I have talked about this yeah. and that we, we believe other than Wyatt Johnston, maybe he was probably one of the best forwards Definitely. on the stars team this in, in the postseason. And I, I think that goes back and you go back to that scene at the end of the 2020 bubble playoffs mm-hmm. when just the, the situation that it was, it, the world had never seen something like this. He had a chance to win the Stanley cup. He was two wins away he lost it in game six and it would have been remembered for forever because of the circumstances. Right. And he remembers that like, like when, when totes put that whole documentary together uh, for Fox sports Southwest back in the day, that was the very last thing that he put into that documentary. And that I'm getting goosebumps thinking about yeah. that because it will live in my mind for forever. If he is not able to, to get to that ultimate quest of winning the Stanley cup. And you know, Dallas stars fans are going to be completely disheartened. If we don't sign him and he goes somewhere else, at, God forbid Colorado yeah. or, or Nashville or something like that. And win a Stanley cup with that franchise after being with the stars for as long as he does. So the, I mean, I, I I know you were like 75, 25. I'm mm-hmm. like 99 one. I love it. Yeah. But that's yeah. the, and maybe that's the the fan a little bit talking in me and the it's the more of the emotional side but this is one of the few one of the few times unlike you know free agency we talked about the emotional connection with that and that you shouldn't you know hold on to that too much this is one of those things where you have to hold on to it just yeah. for the le- the legacy of your <laughs> franchise the legacy mm-hmm. of the player the legacy of of this era of Dallas Stars hockey you can't let Jamie Ben go off and go win a Stanley Cup somewhere else. I'm sorry, you can't. Sagan and um, Sagan and Ben have sort of the early 2010s Rangers to them, right? The yes. Beltres, the yes. Youngs of the world that are trying to get it done. They've yeah. come so close, and they haven't been able to cross the finish line. And if they don't get it done together, you're just gonna feel just feel sick to your stomach until somebody comes along and and finally almost. Uh, finally someone breaks through like the Rangers did this past season. And, and it does soften some of the blow, but you still look back and you're like, oh, man, Bel- I mean, well, Beltre, I, I, Beltre is one of my favorite players of all time. I think about him just never even had a ring. It's just like, it, it softens the blow. The Rangers mm-hmm. got it done. Um, I think a lot of stars fans may feel that way about this era of, of hockey. If Sagan and Ben aren't able to, to reach that goal. 
Right, man. Just like Michael Young. I don't know why his name popped into my head, but yeah. Mike, like even further back, even further back from Beltre, like he was one of my yeah. favorite Rangers growing yeah, Kinsler, up. You throw him and in yeah, too, yeah, and, <laughs> and uh, he just they they were just never able to get it done with uh, either the the Michael Young years or the Beltre years. Mm. Oh my gosh, one one pitch away. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, one yeah. pitch away against the Cardinals. Dang yeah. it! Yeah, and they're in okay. and they're in St. Louis currently right now playing a, a oh. series, of course. Oh. So I guess it uh, it all comes. Uh, full circle, but I, I love Ben the player. I, I I don't argue with you there. I I think he, uh, I think he'll still be productive in in his mid thirties. I think he's going to get better, and especially with what Dallas can put around them. I will give Dallas uh, a more benefit of the doubt. Like like a team like Tampa Bay. Part of the reason why is they, I mean they paid some guys. Like they paid Sorelli. They paid Point. They paid them pretty hefty hefty salaries after they won a few of those cups. So it made it a lot harder to, to get a uh, Stamkos and their consolation prize is against all. So <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, what are they complaining about? Yeah, yeah exactly. They'll be, um, they'll be just fine.